So we did the mark thingy last time. We went through the mark and uh, through marks of the students, we did a loop through it and uh, we collected all the marks and printed an average, right? That's what we have done, right? Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna build it quickly today, again, from scratch. So we'll go through it and we're gonna build the, the rest of the lecture on that one, okay? It becomes kind of a review on what we have done last time on loops, repetition, and then we're gonna go after that. First of all, any questions on what we've talked about last time? Is there a question? No? No, okay, no. All right, as I mentioned, whenever you are coding, you always make sure that you have the, the full construct built of what you're doing and then fill in the blanks. I have the main over here, I complete it, and I'm gonna say return zero. And then I close it, then I'll come over here and start writing the code, okay? I'm gonna start back there with the person who's busy with the computer. Um, so, return zero, where does that zero go to? Remember? You can say pass. It's because I don't even, I'm not even sure that I actually mentioned it, so. <laughs> do you know where it goes to? Do you, do you know where it, where it goes to? To goes to the operating system. Okay, so essentially every function when, they're, when it's finished, it actually it can, if it returns something, it throws back a value. So operating system is calling our main. Main gets called, whatever is supposed to happen. At the end, it returns a value back to the operating system. There's this value only for this function is defined to be the status that the program ended, okay? And there is no standard thing for it. The value that it returns doesn't mean anything. Uh, it means like you, you can re return 156 doesn't make any difference. It doesn't do, operating system doesn't perform any tasks be, depending on what happens over there. The value that main returns essentially is, uh, uh, depending on the manual that you write about your program, you give it to the client. You gotta say, if it returned 32, that means the file was not open successfully. If it returns 156, it means the database was not reached. If it re returns, I don't know, 965, that means that windsocket application for the soap thing even, whatever, okay? But because a good scenario with everything happens perfectly is a unique thing, the unique value zero is selected for that. Usually it's an unspoken standard between programmers that when your program returns zero, it means nothing went wrong. Good, okay? That doesn't mean that zero means true. It's only for main returning the value to operating system. Are we okay with that? Are we okay? Are we okay? Okay, all right. I see off your faces that you're a little tired today, okay? Um, I don't know, you had a test, twiz, whatever, I don't know, too much, too much studying to do. Next time, come in with a coffee and bring me one, okay? So, <laughs> I'm kidding, don't bring me one, I have mine, but uh, Mickey Mouse one, okay? So, uh, um, but uh, anyway, um, I know it's the last class that you have, and uh, I, this is most, probably the most boring thing that you hear in your classes, so try to wake yourself up. <clears throat> so, we said uh, we wanted to get several marks and find out what the average is and how we do that. We, uh, whenever you are writing a program, what you do first, you think about how you do it on paper, and then you take that and put it in a computer. So when, if, if I ask you, okay, could you please go and see what is the average of the marks in class? What you do, you're gonna get a paper, you go one by one, what was your mark, what was your mark? You add them all up, and then you count, okay, I asked 25 people to, and 25 people gave me their marks, so two divided by 25, I know what the average of the marks are, right? That's exactly what we do. So, the very first thing that I need to do is to be able to do something 25 times. And that's why we say we program the computer. Computer can do things fast. Repetition matters. If you wanna do something only once, computer is not for you, do it yourself, okay? It takes much longer for you to program it. Unless you want to run that program 55,000 times, and that, that means, means something, okay? So again, repetition is the key, okay? How do we repeat something? We said the construct for repetition is what we call a loop, 
and a loop, a standard mother of all loops in C language called a while loop. So you literally write write, write while, and inside parentheses in front of the while, you put a condition, and the body of the while based on that condition being true is going to repeat over and over and over and over. If the condition is true, that while happens forever. We did that in the loop with hellos, hypnotizing, remember that? So, now this condition over here is for us to make the loop do things as many times as we want. And because of that, we decided to create a variable and call it a counter to be able to count things with. So we said we're going to reset the counter to zero at the beginning of the loop, then put a condition over here, say, okay, while this counter is less than the number of students, 25 let's say, and then do whatever is supposed to be done, whatever, and then add one to the counter. Are we okay with this? Question? Suggestion? So whatever happens 25 times now. Are we okay? All right. Now the gentleman over there is going to tell me how to write, I want another way to write counter plus plus. Add one to counter. How do I write it? Yeah, it's you beside the lady. No, 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 no. He, he knows who you are. Yeah. After that, lady is you and then, then you and then it, we got to go like that. Go ahead. Another way to write counter plus plus. How do I write it? Nice. Never thought of that. The gentleman. Another way to write counter plus plus. No, no, no. Guys, when I ask that gentleman, it's the name. So <clears throat> let, me, let me just go. It goes like this, then that gentleman, then it's going to be you, then it's going to go like this, and comes back like that, and it comes like So the last person is going to answer is going to be that lady over there. OK, so another way, another way to add one to a variable. Another way to add one to a variable. Perfect. So <clears throat> say it. Say counter is equal to counter is set to counter plus one. <clears throat> Another way, please, to add one to the variable. How do I do that? How do I do that? Sadly, yes. Another way of doing it, please. <laughs> oh, yes, there's another way. Another way, please. No, that's actually one. Yeah, OK. <laughs> so counter plus equal one. <laughs> I cannot, I, usually, I go by three. Like, <laughs> OK. So. These I didn't care about. That I don't care about. This is fine, OK? If it's, in a, if it's on a statement by its own, it doesn't matter. You can do that. So just, we just wanted to remember how many different ways we can do uh, a plus plus. Are we OK with this? <laughs> so it means I have lots of smart students over here who know how to answer questions. All right. Are we OK? All right. So, can, uh, so this wild thing is happening these many times. So this whatever is happening these many times. So now if I want to do it 25 times, the class is not always 25. The number of quizzes and assessment that's happened is not always 25. I don't know how many. So I need to ask the user to tell me how many things they have. Whenever you receive something from the input, you need to put it somewhere. OK? That somewhere is called a. Variable. It calls a variable, right? So if I want to actually get number of students, what type of a variable is a good thing to use? A double? Like I'd have a two and a half students? Really? <laughs> An integer. Thank you very much. Out of all the things you can say, character, short, long, long, <laughs> double. Yeah, three and a half students did the okay, so. So, 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 I need, uh, so I need to have something for number of students, uh, or, or number of marks, let's say. Number of marks that I want to read, so that's number of marks, okay? So what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do, 
uh, I want to introduce to the user what type of program they're dealing with. So I'm going to say, OK, this is a welcome to assessment and I'll analyze a program. OK, so it's going to analyze your assessment. <laughs> OK, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to tell to the thing to tell to the user to uh, enter the number of students, right? And how do I read that? We know that already. And get ready the next person who's supposed to answer. Who is you? Can you please tell me what is this statement in English, not C language? That's too much English. <laughs> Instead of scan F percent the ampersand number of marks, what should I say? Okay. <laughs> Number of marks. Thank you very much. Oh, the, you know, use English. Say read an integer and put it in an address of number of marks. Okay. Okay. So perfect. Thank you. That's what I wanted to say. Remember that. So it's just we're just gonna repeat that over and over. Okay. So now we have number of marks, and I can put this one over here. And I have number of marks. So essentially, this is gonna happen number of marks times. Are we okay with this? Should I remove these three lines not to be distractive? No? OK, I was a very firm no. No! OK, <laughs> okay. it's not like no. It's like no! OK, OK, I'll leave it. My apologies. All right, now I have the counter. Now that I have, now this, thing, this thing's happening number of marks times, I should get actually the mark from the student. And because there are several things that we are getting from the student, we don't want to keep saying, enter a mark, enter a mark, enter a mark, enter a mark. We want to put a title up there and say, enter these many marks. And then say, one, two, three. So they actually get it by row. That's what, what we did. It um, um, was to actually tell to the, to the user, please enter percent the integer marks, and the number of marks is going to go right to here. So it's going to say, please enter number of mark, marks for the CS assessment. If it's 25, it says 25, 4, 4. So it's going to tell it, right? And then we need to display the row of entry so they know which one they are entering. So I'm going to say print formatted, an integer. And now I want to show the row number, which our friend's going to help us with us. Our, the loop. The values inside the counter inside while loop. Tell me what is the minimum number that the counter can have inside the loop, and what is the maximum number? Zero to, zero to yeah, zero to tw <laughs> if the user decides it's 25. Zero to, yeah. zero to number of marks minus one. Correct. Now, if I want to show the row number over here, what should I put over here? Because counter starts from zero, user doesn't understand it. I want the user to see one instead of zero. I want the user to see three instead of two. So if it's two, I want to show three. What do I put over here? I want if it's counter, I want it to be counter one more. How do I write it over here? Counter plus one. If I can write it, of course. Counter plus one. So now it actually shows, because everything in C language starts from zero. We know that, right? That's our standard. That's how everything, work, everything works. Because it starts from 0, I'm going to show counter plus 1. So if it starts from 0, it's going to sh show 1 when the index is 0. It's going to show 10 when the index is what? 9. When the index is 9, it's going to show 10. It always shows 1 more than what the counter is, so the user can understand what's going on, right? So essentially, if I run this program now, because I'm not doing anything over there, all it's going to do is actually a very bad thing to do. I need to put a column over here so the user sees a column. Now, if I run this program and I say over here number of work analysis three, it's going to show one, two, three. You see that? One, two, three. Just going to show that one, which is not good. I don't want that. After each entry over here, I want to actually get the number for the user. OK? If I want to get the number for the user, I have to get the mark for the user. Where do I put it? I want to get a mark from the user. Where do I put it? In a variable. What is the name of the variable? It's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say marks because it's only one mark, right? I get one mark at a time. So mark it is. 
And what type of variable is good for a mark, my friend, over there? That's you. It's you. Don't look at it. Yeah. Yeah. What type of a mark? And it's supposed to be a percentage. So I want to hold over there 94, 10, 64, from 1 to, 1 to 100. What type of a variable is good for it? You know, it's a whole value. It doesn't have any partial marks. What is it going to be? The type. No, no, no. There's no point. So it's an integer. Yeah, it's an integer. We need an integer. Beautiful. OK, integer is fine. OK, some, if you want to play with me, you could have said character, because that's enough. It goes from 0 to 127, right? Even character is enough for, an, for a mark, because it goes up. To, but integer is fine. So I'm going to have integer marks. So up here, I'm going to have int mark. And I'm going to read the mark. So how do I read the mark from the keyboard? What is the command? It starts with S. <laughs> Scanf, perfect. All right, what do I put over here to get an integer? Per percent. D, perfect. And the lady after that. The name of the variable is mark. What do I put over here to get the to put the value in the address of mark? Perfect. But how do I write an address of mark? What type of a thing do I use? The thing that I said never to say? Never say what? I said never say. <laughs> Ampersand. The address, address of mark. Perfectly correct. Oh, she follows the rules perfectly. OK. All right. So I'm saying reading an integer and putting an address of mark. Thank you very much. Perfectly correct. So I'm getting the mark now. OK? I'm getting the mark. Life is beautiful. One by one marks are being received. Now I need to sum them up, add them all up in one variable. And in that one variable, uh, when they are all summed up, I can actually add, uh, divide it through the number of marks. What type of a variable is good for sum? Int. Int is very fine. I can use an int if I'm not that much picky about exactly what the percentage is. So if the first person get uh, 100, if, I, if, it's, if there are two students, one gets 100, the other one gets 49, then the average is 74.5, right? So if 74 is enough for me, not 74.5, integer is just fine. But if I want to be precise what type of a thing I use, double is fine. You could have said float. But nobody uses float anymore. It's too imprecise. Everybody uses double. We use double. OK? So double it is, and I'm going to call it sum. Sum, 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 sum. All right. Now, when I read the mark, I have to add the mark to sum. How do I do that? Sum plus equal mark. Sum plus equal mark. Perfect. Or? I want kindergarten version of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to write it. Thank you. So sum is equal to sum plus mark. It was like something like that. Okay. So so that so again, we just remember. I just want to, you to remember what the abbreviations are. So now that I have this thing and I go through it one by one, it's going to find out what the what the average is. And let me actually collapse that. <clears throat> okay. What the average is and yes. Thank you very much. That was the next thing. I wanted to say, it's wrong, and tell me what it is. And you got it already. Kind of ruined my, my. <laughs> OK, yes, we need to initialize some. Anything that you collect values in, and anything, the rule of initialization, uh, the rule of setting or initializing a value to an initial value is, if the first thing you do to a variable is modification, you modify the value based on the value that is in it, you need to initialize it first. But if you are setting the value the first time, no initialization is needed. Because I have a sum, I'm adding something to the previous value, I have to set it to zero. Muchas gracias, señor. <laughs> All right. Sum set to zero. Do I need to write zero or 0, 0.0? 0? Sum is double. Oh, that, that's 0 0.00000. And as I wanted to go with two. <laughs> but, but, no, but, but no, you don't need to. 
Zero is zero everywhere, okay? Because you are putting zero over here, remember I told you whenever you have <clears throat> an operation happening between the two types, when you're doing a setting, it always casts that one to the other one. A zero that is integer, it gets casted to a double zero, it becomes a 0.0, .0 in it anyway. So there is no need. We could have done it. Thank you very much. But 0.0, .0 so this, is, this suffices, by the way. Done. <laughs> that means a, a floating point zero. Okay? You don't need to even put a zero after that. But this will do too. All right? Are we okay? All right. So now we have all the stuff created. I can actually say what is the, the mark uh, average. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to print the value and go to new line. And in here, I'm going to print the average, which is divided by counter. <clears throat> is ah, OK, I couldn't finish. OK, the, the gentleman back there, is that correct or it needs to be changed? What is that thing over there? Am I missing something? No, I'm not. OK. Counter or number of marks, which one is correct? Sum divided by counter or sum divided by number of marks, which one is correct? When you are, when you are doing an average, which one is correct? Number of marks. Why not counter? OK, let's analyze this. Let's analyze this. Counter is 0, correct? It starts from the beginning, so it's 0. How does the while loop break? When counter becomes equal to number of marks, it breaks. So counter or number of marks, they are both correct. They are both correct, but which one is proper? Number of marks. Counter becomes meh. Somebody looks at it and says, what the heck? What is a counter? Let me look. Oh, it's number of marks. OK? So it's better not to do that. Although, this is one of those but it works moments that students come to the office and say, but it works. I know it works. It's not proper. OK? Thank you for correcting yourself over there. So it's got to be number of marks. Are we OK? This is the end of our last session. Remember that? All right. Should I save it? Let me just run it and see what happens first. So enter a number of yada, yada, yada. I'm going to put over here 3. So we're going to go 30, 60, 70. Ta da It works. Perfect. <clears throat> so save it. Over here, I'm going to say uh, 0, 01 loop review. Let's see. OK, so that's the one that we had from last, day, last time. <clears throat> and let me bring the solution explorer over here. I like it at right hand side. <clears throat> if I can do it, it would be nice. Seriously? Okay, it doesn't well go there. Thank you. All right, okay, so <clears throat> now, new query. I have written, and this happens to you every single time that you are programming, okay? Very important thing. It happens to you every single time. You sit with the client. They ask you exactly what they want. You do it perfectly. And then you go to a client and say, can you add this too? It happens all the time. Remember, you write, an, write like an iron proof tight contract. Because this, can you add this? That means three more months of work, OK? Careful, OK? But let's say you didn't write the contract, then I'm going to ask you, is it possible to find out how many people passed? I need to know that. I want to know how many people in this class passed, OK? How do I do that? First of all, as soon as somebody say, can I know something? I have to calculate something. What do you want? Number of people who passed. Immediately, you need a place to hold this thing. That is a? Um, yeah, it's a variable and an integer, correct? Because it's number of people. I don't have 2.5 people, right? OK, so, so 
So that's what I want. So the very first thing that I need to do over here to see how many people passed. So I'm going to say int and I'm going to call it passed. Okay? And because it's something that I have to keep counting, I have to make sure that pass thingy is zero. We know that for a fact, right? We are counting something. <clears throat> now, in here, in this while loop, every single time that I'm getting the mark, I have to look at the mark. Did this guy pass? Does this lady pass? Yes. If it's yes, I have to add one to pass. If not, I shouldn't pass anything. I don't, I, I don't add. This is where we use an if statement. If statement is a while statement that happens only once. Identical. No difference. A while statement's condition true, keep going over and over and over. An if statement's condition true only happens once. If it's not true, it never happens. Okay? So I'll do the exact same thing. I need to check for it. So I'll check for it. So I'm going to come in here and say, okay, you gave me the mark. Thank you very much. I'm going to add it to sum. Then I'm going to check if mark. What is the condition of a mark being passed? What do you get to pass in Seneca College? 50%. So what is the condition for it? Greater than? 50? Okay. And what well, I'm saying, passed plus plus. Right? I'm not going to say what's that. Say that. Do, do, do it in another way. We did that enough. But that's not right. Debug it, please. If you get 50, did you pass? Yes. Does it add to the value of pass? Thank you. Greater or equal. I want it to be 50 plus. It means 50 plus, which means 50 equal to 50, greater than or equal to 50. <clears throat> it's, a, it's not a good idea to write greater than 49. Okay? Again, try to be in a way that somebody looks at it get it immediately. If you say greater than 49, they have to do a math. Say, okay, if it's great, so anybody who gets a 50 is a pass. I know it's nothing, but you're adding one more process to someone's brain that you don't want to. So this is more descriptive. Are we okay with this? <clears throat> now that I have this thing, I can actually show how many people passed, correct? How do I, now, now that I'm doing this, let's actually find out how many people have failed too. We can do that, right? So what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to say <clears throat> in failed, I'm not going to ask anyone for this. And in here, I'm going to say if mark is less than 50, now that's a fail, I'm sure. Failed will be plus plus, right? Correct? And now I can actually go and show a message telling that, can you see that back there? Is that readable? OK. So I can say total of percent D passed students passed the assessment while failed of them failed. OK? So it actually shows how many people failed. So I'm adding to the reports. That's what if statements are used. OK? So <clears throat> if uh, Run it just to see what happens. <clears throat> Seriously? Oh, see, I didn't initialize fail. This is a new thing, actually. It, didn't, it actually didn't compile because I am modifying something, and I did not set it to anything. And on a, it actually stops me. Compilers don't do that, OK? Compilers run, and you're going to get garbage all over the place. This is one of the things that is kind of, When I say new, it means last 15 years, OK? So, so <laughs> failed. Set to zero. Run it one more time. <clears throat> Number of marks. I'm going to put three over here. I'm going to put 10, 60, and 50. Two students passed. One failed. The average is 40.0. Are you okay with this? Perfect. So this is actually 0 0.2 loop and loop and if dot c. Now, whenever you have a condition where two ifs back to back <clears throat> complete a full spectrum of possibilities, wow, 
that was philosophical. Okay, <clears throat> whenever one is the exact opposite of the other one, you don't need to put the second one. Okay, if there's either this bottle or that one, I'm going to say you can either this half one or the other one, right? So if not this one, else that one. That's when else comes to the thing, right? So in here, if that's the exact <clears throat> opposite of the other one, all I need to do is to put an else over here. I else is a iPhone version of else. <clears throat> else, okay. Right? Are we okay with this? So now I'm going to say if mark is greater than yada yada past, else failed. So you want me to walk through this and show you how it works? Anyone? Okay. I thought they were going to say, no, nah, it's okay. But apparently not. Okay, so <clears throat> let's run it. Coffee. Okay, let's do it like this. So I'm going to write, write, um, <clears throat> go right down to here. I'm going to um, just put it right before the printf. Actually, let's put it before scan. I'm going to stop it right here. Then I'm going to say either continue or F5. And it comes right to that. Now it's going to say, please enter a number for marks. I'm going to put over here three, and I'm going to hit enter. Okay, so it comes, gets the first mark. Battery is running low. Hurry up. I don't have an adapter. I have to go downstairs, but it's okay. Well, that's got to be your break. How much do I have? I have... I'll pause right over here because I don't want it to go low and uh, the recording stops. I'll come back and, and I'll continue. So stop. I am pausing the recording. So I'm getting the mark. I'm at the stage that I'm getting the mark. Getting the mark? He doesn't want it. Getting the mark, and, and then what we do over here, I'm going to go one step, so it's going to actually get the mark. So I'll put over here 55, hit enter. As you see, 55 is here, adds it to sum. Now the condition is mark 55 greater than 50. The result is true. Because it's true, pass that is 0 will be added by 1, becomes 1, else is skipped. Okay? The next one goes up, counter is one, number of marks three, comes down, shows two, gets the next mark. This one is 45, I hit enter, comes over here, adds that one to the sum. Is this one true? No, it's not. It's false. Because it's false, it goes, skips the, the the first part and executes the second one that is failed plus plus and so on. So that's how all if statements work. And it goes to the end. It has everything accumulated and done and done. Are we okay with this? All right. Yes, sir. You mean? Put the failed instead of pass and pass instead of fail? Write else and an F afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. No, it doesn't work. It's if else. You never say, <laughs> I, don't, I can't even say it. <laughs> All right. It's one of those questions. Like, would it work if I poke myself in the eye? Anyways. All right. So we are okay with this. So let's continue with that. Uh, <clears throat> this is the if-else part. So, so that's 0, 3. Uh, loop. And if-else. Now I'm going to do else if, especially for you, okay? Now, 
and I'm gonna and I'm gonna delete these things because we have it in 55 different things. So um, now that we have this, what if you after you do this, and you again take it to the client? The client says it's very important for me to know how many barely passed, just passed with mark 50. I want to know that too. You're gonna say okay. Then you come back, charge them $5,000 more. You come back and you say, okay, now I have to check to see if, if the mark, what's going on? If the mark is equal to 50, if it's equal to 50, barely passed. Barely passed. How do I do barely passed? Because I'm calculating something new, I need a new variable to store it in. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add just passed. Okay? And I'm going to make, of course, I'm going to set just passed to 0 too. So I'm going to say just passed to 0 too. And then I'm going to say over here, just passed, plus, plus. Oh, and I'm editing the wrong file. Control A, C, new. There you go. So just passed, plus, plus. And now I have this one and then this one. And then if this happens, I don't want any of these to happen, right? This is a radio button situation, OK? When you want to select a station on radio, whichever you select, the other ones get popped out. <coughs> when you select another station, the other one gets unchecked. One out of many. It is impossible for this scenario. So if I write it like this, what's going to happen? It, again, it works. Why? Because it checks. Is it 50? Of course, I'm going to remove that. So this is going to get removed from here. So it's going to say, if mark is 50, then it's going to be like that. So if it's not 50, it comes over here and goes to this if else statement. So it will work. But if mark is 50, just passed plus plus will be added one then it comes check the condition and then does something why should it check the condition when that one is already done again the conditions that i have over here all three conditions cover everything all range of answers when one is selected i don't want the other ones to be selected this is an else if situation which means you are saying if mark is 50 else if so you can keep going like that and put the conditions this means this kind of a struct you say if condition else if else if else if else if and else at the end when you put this if one of the conditions go true neither none of none of neither will be none of the others will be happening okay so one out of many only this is an else if construct and it's important for us to know. So now, first of all, I have to fix this. It's past plus. So the number of people who pass are past plus just past, right? It, it's not just uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the past ones. These two together has to be added. And then after that, I have to add a comment to accommodate the, the new thing that they wanted to see. And that's what I'm going to say. These many students were borderline passes. Borderline is one word. And I want to mention borderline passes. <laughs> OK? When I want to say borderline, I want to put double quotes around it to kind of put emphasis around it. So to put double quote, I put backslash double quote and backslash double quote. And that's what that's going to accomplish that one. So now I can actually run it. And you'll see that with an if and else if. I can have many conditions checked. So I'm going to put over here four. I'm going to have uh, two 
50, 60, and 80. So three students passed. One of them failed. One student where borderline passes, okay? So you could fix that at home, all right? It's a good practice, seriously. You could fix all those things. It's, it makes it much more complicated. But you'll see, remember I told you the business logic is very simple. Writing a user interface is very difficult. That's like 70%, that's what I'm saying, okay? <clears throat> so essentially you have to write two print statement, check just pass if it's one, you don't put the S. If it's not, you put in so on and so forth. No? Any questions down to here? Suggestions? Objections? No? Lazy ones do like this. <laughs> You've seen that message somewhere, no? I told you, yeah. That's lazy one. No? They don't want to program, OK? <laughs> That's lazy ones, trust me. <laughs> no, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to put a percent C over here, okay? Then I'm going to say, if just passed is equal to 1 is greater than 1, put a, an S over there. Otherwise, don't put anything. That is a conditional expression. That is a mini if statement that you can write in, in C language. So I'm saying print a character in here. What is that character? Check this condition. If it's true, pass S. If it's not, pass space. Done. OK? That's a cool thing to do. Now, if I don't want to try it again, but trust me, yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. How can you fix that? Hmm? You can't don't do anything. It's gonna it's gonna pass the C over there. It says when you when it doesn't show the S, you're gonna have two spaces. When it shows the S, they're gonna have one space. You see, there is always a problem somewhere. That, I love that. You have to think like that. Whenever you, I'm telling you, you have to, you have to think like that when you're programming. Okay? Fix it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> fix it. Try to fix it. All right. So, <laughs> okay. What do I want to say? Completely forgot. There is no. This doesn't have, this, you, with conditional expression, you don't have an option. You have to have an else. Okay? To, oh gosh. Without this, without this, then you have to have two things. So you can actually put this one over here and, or you can, anyways, forget it. Find out how it's done. Fix it. I'm not going to fix this. I'm going to go control Z, put it over here, fix it. It's actually a very simple way to do it. But you have to learn a little more. Not now you don't have enough knowledge, but it's, it's easily fixed. All right? And you have to fix it for this one too, by the way. There's another one over there. I'm not touching it. <laughs> then when you have an ad, oh, you can't. It's one character. There are no two characters here. It's one character. You don't have a character like this. Nice try. You're getting close. But that's, it's a character. A character is a single character. You can have two characters over there. All right. That's, that's not what I want to teach for heaven's sake. <laughs> so it was good, but enough. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so we're okay with this, right? We know if else stuff. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay one? No, you're not okay. <laughs> Could you please hit him in the back? <laughs> okay, are we okay? All right. So 
I always say this that I, oh, so this is, uh, uh, I'm going to put over here uh, 0, 4 loop and else if. Didn't I tell you don't go too far? <laughs> <laughs> all right are we okay with this all right now the next thing <clears throat> is about <clears throat> what I, al I always mention this in five different things remember I, I was talking about if you go to Wendy's and you you want to get the fries and a burger and a coke you have a choice to say I want a fries and a burger and a coke or you can say I want combo number two Hopefully that's fries and a burger and a coke. But you're going to say combo number two. They give the, We have the exact same thing over here, okay? Which means, look at this loop. Whenever you have a loop with this, let me just put this thing in its place. It's misplaced. Whenever you have a loop with this construct, essentially, whenever you have a loop that you are you do an initialization, a setting, before the loop. Then you have a condition, and then you have an addition at the end. Whenever you have this scenario, okay, you can replace this with a 4. You can get this thing and put it right over here. And you can get this thing and put it right over here, separating it with a semicolon. So what you see, <clears throat> I'm not saying that this, is lux, this looks like the other one. These two loops are identical. Really, potatoes, potatoes, exactly the same. Absolutely no difference. Okay? Why they did this? Because they just want to be able to quickly type something. I want to repeat something, set it to zero, condition, add one, done. Okay? That's what it is. So... If I ask you, and I will ask you, this is a for loop converted to a while loop, you take the first one, you put it right before the loop. You put the condition in front of it, you bring that one to the end of the loop, and you have a while loop. It is exactly the same with absolutely no difference. Are we okay with this? So we're just going to leave it that way, okay? You do not need to, for me, while I'm your prof, next prof comes in, I don't know what they want to do. You don't need to write me a for loop, even if they ask you to write me a for loop. You can always do it with a while, because they are the same. It doesn't make any difference to me. Okay? So. Any questions? <clears throat> so you finish this, and you're very proud. You run it, and even S is printed over there properly. So you're going to go over here, 3, 4 over here. And again, I'm going to go 20, uh, 50, 70, and 90. And it's going to say one student with two spaces. OK? OK? <laughs> Look at this. Where? <laughs> one student where? OK, I, I better put that. S over there, but so this has to get fixed too, by the way. So you see, it's a, that's a perfect example of how you write an application. You think you fixed it, and then you screw it up. You have to fix it again. But again, fix it. Make it work, OK? I'm not going to fix that. But let's say you did this, and assuming that this is good and perfect and everything's nice, the the Client says, that's nice, but I want to see all the marks listed and then the average and everything. So when I enter all the information, I want you to print me a table with all the marks from top to bottom. That's where you're going to say, oops, I have to go back to class because I don't know how to do that. Because every single time I'm reading a new mark, I'm overwriting the old one. There's no way for me to 
keep them all. Okay? How does C fix this problem? Using a data structure called an array. Okay? How does an array work? An array is essentially when <clears throat> you want to create lots of variables and it's physically impossible to do so without individually creating them. If I want five variables, I can, five integers, I can go integer A, B, C, D, and E, right? That's five integers. But if in a loop I want to read them one by one, I can't. Because how can I read in a loop A, how can I change A to B in the next loop and B to C in the next loop? I can't do that. I have to actually write five scanners for this, right? What if I want to have these things serialized? So scanf automatically reads the first one, then the second, then the third, and the fourth, and I want to use the index of the loop to go through them. I can't do it with this. This is what arrays are created for. So what you do is this. You create an array. How arrays are created? It's like every single variable. The only thing is that you just mentioned how many. So first, you're going to have a type. Then you're going to have a name for the, the array. And then you're going to say how many. That's an array. OK? So you can say int mark 100. It means I have 100 marks. OK? You can say short or double price 3. It means I have three prices, three doubles. You can say short num 100,000. It means you have 100,000 short integers. The name is num. But it's C language. How do I actually refer to these guys? If I want to, yeah, I know I have three prices. How do I access the first price, the second price, or the third price? It's simple. You use the index. And in C language, indexes start from what? Zero. So if I have 0 to 3, the index are going to be 0, 1, and 2. How many fingers? How many fingers? <laughs> really? The other class did the exact same. 9? Really? I'm asking how many fingers. It's not 9 fingers. I don't have one chopped off. I have 10 fingers. How many fingers? 10. Starts from 0, goes up to? Nine. Okay, I have ten fingers, really. I do. Okay, but when you index them, it starts from zero to nine. That's exactly what it is over here. So when I told you how many marks? 100. Indexes start from zero, goes up to 99. Are we okay with that? All right. Now, there comes the question of initializing them. If I have a variable, not setting. Setting, there is no way. You have to individually set them, one by one. But if you want to initialize, I want to set them all to zero. How can I do? How can I do that? I want to set those prices to 59 and 32. How can I do that? Initializing variables is pretty simple. It's exactly like math. In a math, you have a set and you have elements in a set, right? That's how we show the arrays in here. So if I want to do, set those three prices to three values, I'm going to say set to, and I'm going to have an open curly bracket and a closed curly bracket. Then what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to write, say, 1.3, comma, 56 point that one, comma, 1, 2, 3, point 4, 5, 6. And there you go. Now, <coughs> price 0 will be 1.3. Price 1 will be 56.78. Price 2 will be 1, 2, 3, point 4, 5, 6. Are we OK? That's how you initialize them which means the array will not get created with garbage in it, and then you set it to something. Right at the moment of creation, it will have 1.356 something and something in it, right? Got it? All right? If you want to initialize them, now if I want to say initialize this thing to a some value, so I'm going to so go uh, 1, 3, and 10, okay? But I have 100. What happens to the next? Okay? If you do not initialize an array, you're going to have garbage in it. That's what it is. Garbage. There's n no one knows what's in there. 
But if you initialize to a initialize an array to variables, and the number is smaller than the number of the, the things that you have, the rest will be set to zero, no matter what you have. So in here, the first three will be 1, 3, and 10, and the rest, the 97 of them, will be all zero. So if I told you, and I will ask you in the quiz, how do I initialize all the elements of that array short to a zero, this is how you do it. You just set the first element to zero. And because the rest will be set to zero, everything will be set to zero. All right? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? So, so zero five array syntax does not run. Okay, this does not run. This is not a program. Okay, I know people are gonna tomorrow run. I compiled that thing and nothing happened. Okay, it's just I was just okay. Are we okay with this? All right. Next thing. Now we want to accommodate one that what the user said. User said I want to have students to. Okay, and uh, I want to get all the information about the students all printed and so on and so forth. So, what do I do? First thing I can do over here is say, okay, because I want lots of marks, what I can do is this. I'm going to say, I'm going to make that an array. How many students I can have in a class in Seneca? 35? Okay. Whenever somebody says 35, you put 100. Okay. When I was programming a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, it was like this was the amount of little bitty tippy RAM that we had in our computers. So we actually have to sit, oh, 35 or 36. Do I add one, four bytes? You have to actually do that, okay? Nowadays, your cell phone has 16 gigs of RAM in it. So who cares if it's 100 or 50, okay? So you can actually, you know, a little bit be sloppy in that manner. Anyway, so. I'm going to put over here 100 because I know it's not going to go even high to 100, up to 100 ever. And some people, when they are doing arrays, they put an S over there just to give it sensation. It's not only one, it's marks. Doesn't make any difference. You get with mark 100 or marks 100, whatever. Doesn't make any difference. Okay? So that S doesn't mean anything. Just put it over there because I like it. All right? And now everything else is identical. I don't need to change anything. The counter is printing, but when I'm actually reading it, I have to say the counter is the index of the loop, right? The first time its counter is zero, then it's one, then it's two, and it goes out to the end of number of marks, right? So what I do over here, I'm going to say put it in the address of marks, and in here I'm going to put the counter. Okay? As a matter of fact, it would have been much better if I called the counter index. That's why whenever you see they are writing a loop, they always write for i set to zero, i because it stands for index. Okay, it's something that you hear everywhere. But I put it counter. And now, the f in a first loop when counter is zero, it puts the first mark in marks zero. So I have all the calculations set over there, I'll set it to marks. And it's not going to make any difference. So when I run this beautiful program on mine, Copy, paste, paste, paste. Any mark left anywhere? I don't think so. Now let me fix this ugly thing over here. Okay, so students, printf. I'm, I'm doing it kindergarten version. You can do it easier than that. If just fast is greater than one and then you'd write over here 
printf uh, is and then over here you say else printf I don't want it to be ugly and later on somebody okay s where and I'm going to go to next line, and now I'm going to say printf. Okay, so there's a space over there. We don't need this space. I think this is going to do. What is this S over here? Oh, there's another S over <laughs> <laughs> And then in this one, I'm going to put percent %c. <laughs> just to show you how difficult it is. Then just pass greater than one, I'm going to put over here S, and I'll just somebody, see, one person asked the question, and all right, now it's going to be actually, the message is right now, you fix the top one, okay, so now it's going to say pass, and if it's greater than it's going to say, oh, it's reverse. If it's one, it's going to say is, otherwise it's going to say s, where, and then goes there. So uh, that's for that one. All right. So now uh, the array is, uh, it, it works exactly the same way. There's absolutely nothing different in here. If I run it, you'll see that it is the same. So I'm going to say over here 4, and I'm going to put over here again 20, 50, 70, and 90. And I was going to say one student is borderline pass. <laughs> That's an interesting thing. <laughs> I put a space. Why is it doing that? Oh, that this is this is called what we call this a conditional statement. A conditional statement works like this. You put a condition. It checks the condition. If the condition is true, the first part happens. If the condition is false, the second part happens. I don't know why it's translating my, my space to a question mark. I will find out later on. All right? <clears throat> but I don't want to go through and distract you by, by doing that. It's all his fault back there. S. Yes. Anyways, <clears throat> are we okay with this? All right? So, uh, oh, that's the reason. I have only one thing printed. I, I had one extra thing over there. So it was printing the, yeah, anyways. So it works the exact same way. <coughs> Sorry. Did not accomplish anything. The difference is that in this one, when I actually am at this stage, in this one, when I'm actually at this stage, all the data that is entered is intact. I did not overwrite anything. Every time I'm getting a new mark, it puts it in the next element of the array and goes up to number of marks. So now when I'm at this stage, I have all the marks in the memory. I can go back and print them if I want to. I can actually, I can actually first print a title because I want to show a tape, print a table. And then after that, I can write the exact same for loop that goes through the, goes through the elements one by one. I say counter zero, counter less than number of one, counter plus plus. Then I start printing. Print dash three. It means print in three spaces. Left justified. Let's take that one out, not to confuse you. So <clears throat> because I, I'm printing a table, right? I'm printing a table. I want everything to be under the row, everything to be under the mark, under this one, right? I want to do that. If I just print one over here, then it's going to be one. When it becomes two digits, it's going to shift to right. It's not going to be aligned properly. So I'm going to say print the integer in three spaces. I know it's not going to be more than 100, OK? And the mark, I know the mark's not going to be more than 100, so three spaces is enough. I'm going to say print the integer three spaces two spaces before, one space after, that's exactly the width of this mark. 
and print the bar space then if the marks is equal to 50 print barely if the marks is greater than 50 print yes otherwise print no so that's going to be under the pass and then right underneath I can print a closing statement saying printf sorry actually let's put two, two new lines to give it some space and now if I run this program you'll see that all the data that I enter is going to get reprinted so if I'm going to say over here 4 I'll go 50 30 60 80 oh look at that okay control C for now we are not writing a foolproof program we are assuming that user actually has a brain okay and they are actually typing things the way they are supposed to soon we're gonna learn write a program that assumes that the person sits over here absolutely no idea what's going on does like this and it still detects them we'll go to that pen too so for uh, what was that 50 30 uh, 60 and 80 so it actually says 150 barely 230 so everything is in the array and I can reaccess them and go through them over and over and over arrays are used like this and they are beautiful things you you keep all the data in your program and you can do many things I can actually while you're laughing did I do something wrong in here oh, are you looking at that E over there <laughs> pass okay pace okay okay see uh, that's I, I love actually the, the trouble that I have over here to do that thing let me just see what is that this is an borderline uh, it's that's the one yeah so I can't do that either I have to write another if statement <sighs> just beep it I'm not gonna do anything okay fix you to yourself <laughs> beep okay <laughs> I'm beeping it I don't have to go edit it later on all right anyways <clears throat> fix it yourself all right there's actually an easy way when you learn strings it's easier to do it much easier so <laughs> anyway um, that's it so this is a race and that's how we deal with the race uh, later on if I when I learn how to program more and understand the algorithms and do more exercise and learn to write more complicated programs I can actually even sort these things say I want to sort the marks ascending sort the marks descending uh, I don't know find which one actually you can do this add to the report so it finds out which one is the maximum mark who got the most mark who got the least mark you can do that actually we can't say who we can't say who do we know who got what no it's anonymous right let's do that I want to actually know who got what mark let's keep that over there too how do I do that with the knowledge that I have I don't want to add anything extra okay so with this knowledge I want to find that I want to see how can I actually keep track of who got what number I know we can't deal with names too rich for our blood no names okay what identifies a student a student number right I can hold their student numbers where can I hold them easy I'm gonna create an array with the exact same size of that marks and I'm gonna put the student numbers in them they're integers right all I need to do is <clears throat> to add one more variable one more array with the exact size of marks and call it student numbers so student number zero will have the marks zero student number one will have the marks one student number 10 will have the marks 10 each element of student number with the same index in marks corresponds to the same data this is called parallel arrays when you have several information about the same thing you create several uh, arrays with the exact same size and you uh, make the corresponding indexes to to 
uh, to identify the same record. Okay? Yes. Uh, why can't we have knowledge? Because it's too rich for our blood. <laughs> we don't have enough knowledge yet. I'll tell you why we can't have names. What's your name? Nova. N-O-V-A. How many characters? There is no variable that can hold four things in it. We just learned arrays. So to be able to hold a name, you have to create an array of characters. Read the characters one by one. Put N in name zero. O in name one. V in name two. A in name four. Put a stop sign at the end. Then they call that a string. There is no C has no capabilities, has no way to hold a name, a statement. C does not have that, that uh, feature. The feature is simulated and by programmers. <clears throat> so they kind of faked it. And we'll learn how to fake it soon. But not now. It's too rich for our blood at this moment. OK? So we cannot hold names, so we're going to hold student numbers. Actually, it's so bad that you have to actually do it at the end of the semester, not with me, with whoever comes after me. Yes? Uh, I was just thinking, is there a way for the user to enter uh, how many marks he, is, uh, he wants to enter, and then uh, you set the number of items in the array? Uh, to actually have exactly that much? Yeah. OK. <clears throat> that was a question that people were asking. Can I, instead of marks 100, say marks n? OK. Uh, and then, so create the array after I get it with an n, so it's going to be exactly the same amount. That's what you're saying, right? OK. Um, the thing is that the answer is yes. But that's the new C. 99% of all the compilers in the world right now, they can't do that. You have to over estimate the amount of things that you have and keep it at the beginning, and the rest of them will be wasted. There are two ways of doing it. The one that you're saying is new. I don't want to even go through it, why you can do it, OK? They change many things in C language that you can do it now. So by default, I'll tell you, no, you can't, OK? But of course, there is another way, thing called dynamic memory allocation that you're going to learn in OP244. When you learn dynamic memory allocation, you can actually, on the fly, when your program runs, you can actually ask operating system to give you memory. And you use that memory so that you can measure. You don't, so you essentially ask the user how many things you want. You say that much. Then you multiply it to the size of the user thinking and say, hey, uh, operating system, I want this much memory. And operating system says, here you are. So it's not going to be in your program. Your program runs, and halfway through it, it keeps using memory, releases memory, use memory, release memory, OK? All these things you're going to learn, but it takes time, OK? For now, let's assume we have to kind of overshoot it and just leave the rest unused, OK? For now. That was a beautiful question. Thank you. <clears throat> so now that I have done that, instead of getting the Instead of getting the, um, <clears throat> uh, only the, instead of getting only the mark, I'm going to ask the user, when it's too long, you can break a string in two. And don't put any spaces. When you have two things like that, you can break the string in two and it will attach it together, OK? So if there is space and then after that nothing, you have two strings, compiler will automatic, automatically merge the two, OK? It makes it easier to write the uh, more readable. That's it. This is exactly like the other one. But anyways, so <clears throat> I'm going to say please enter this many marks. Entry format is as follows, student number and then the mark, OK? So with a space between them and then I'm going to come in the loop, and in the loop, instead of having that scanf, I'm going to show a prompt like this. I'm going to say D, student number space mark, go to new line, then percent D, space percent D. So I'm going to say read 
two integers and put them in address of student number counter, marks counter. Therefore, I am putting the two, I'm getting the two things one by one and, and then I put them all in the same record. The rest is the same. <clears throat> I don't do any calculations with student number. I'm just holding it to later on show it in the report. That's all I want to do. So I'm going to go to this report. Instead of just showing the row mark and if it's passed or not, I'm going to actually show row, student number, mark, and then it's passed or not. OK? So I change the, um, uh, the title of the, of, the of the report that I'm printing. And when I'm printing it, I'm going to print it like this. I'm going to say <clears throat> print the row number in three digits. Print this print the student number in nine digits. Some of the student number starts with zero, right? When you enter it for scanf, you say 01256793. That when it, when the scanf is reading it, it ignores the, the, the zero, right? Zero, one is one. It's not zero, one, right? When you are printing it, you say print the student number in nine spaces. But if it's shorter than nine, pad the left with zero. So if it's eight, it shows eight, and then fills the left one with zero just to display it properly. And then you have three spaces for D. You show the counter, the student number, the marks, and then the rest is the same, no difference. Okay? So now all I did over here, just showing, making my, uh, uh, my presentation a little more, uh, hmm, I thought I printed it, I took it right, just a second. Okay, just a second, my apologies. I think it's better now, okay. Now when I run this program, and I'm going to walk through it. First, I'll run it, then walk through. So four. Now it's going to say enter format as follows. It's actually showing how. Student number, so I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the mark is 99. The second student is 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, and the mark is 55. The next one is 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And the mark is 80. And the last one is 444, 555, 666. And the mark is 50. And I hit enter. OK? So now it actually shows row, this one, student number 99. Yes, 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 barely. And I'll see that I have four students. Zero of them failed. One student's borderline passes. OK? Are we OK with this? This is parallel arrays. And these are all, <clears throat> um, you need to know for today. Any questions? You want me to walk through it and see how everything goes in the array now? Or you are dead tired and you want to go? OK. All right, so let's go through it. Don't worry, I'm not going to go through the whole loop. OK? All right. I don't know. I think something funny was said over there, but I didn't hear it. So anyway, so welcome to analysis program. Please enter the number of yada, yada, yada. And it's going to say uh, percent D. So I'm going to say over here 3 and hit Enter. And um, it's going to show us how many things to enter. Get into the loop. Counter is garbage, as you see. But as soon as you go to the for loop, counter becomes zero. It goes into the first one. Uh, it shows the counter that is zero, and then the prompt in front of it. Then does a scanf, puts the first number in student number, second number in marks. If you look at the student number, look at it. You see that? All garbage. If you expand it, you'll see it. All garbage. Right? Same thing for marks. Look at it. All garbage. Expand it, all garbage. Now I'll, I'll execute the first scanf. 
So in here, gotta go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, space 77, hit enter. Now if I look at it, you'll see that the first student number is 1, 2, 3. You see the 0 is not there, right? And the mark over here, the first one is 77. All right? It does the rest of the stuff that it's supposed to do. It comes and gets the second one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, and 50. Same thing. If you look at it, you'll see the first two are now set, and the rest are garbage. For marks the same, 77 and 50. I'm just going to come right down to here. Run it right down to there. The third one is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 7. And I'm going to give it a 40 and hit enter. All right. <clears throat> now, counter became 3. The condition became false. For loop broke, came over here. Now it's going to print the row, uh, the title for the row. Start another for loop with zero starting, printing student number zero, that is one, two, three, four, five. It's eight, but I said print it in nine and put a zero beside it. And the mark is 77, so it's going to do that. Row one in three spaces. This one is padded with zero, and 77 is printed. If I wanted this one to be left justified over here, I could put a dash beside three. So if you put dash three, if it's smaller than the thing, if it's smaller than three digits, it left justifies it. If you'd like to do it for any reason, I didn't do it. Okay, and it goes through the next exactly the same way. It prints over there. Yes, goes back up. The next one gets printed, barely, and the next one gets printed. No, and finito. And one student is borderline passes. Are we okay? Are we okay? And these are parallel arrays. We are done, I think. Any questions? Um, what are the topics for quiz? Right down to parallel arrays. Yeah. Okay? Right down to parallel arrays. Any other questions? No questions? Sorry, today was a brain frying day. My apologies. Have yourself a beautiful day.